There's a great history here at Cornell of struggle. People of color seem to have this kind of like angsty view of like the university as, a, as the institution. And then outsider's perspective, you know, they'll think, you go to an Ivy, you go to an expensive school, why do you care so much? It's very easy to come here and act like you don't know anything that has happened, pretend like you're not black, and keep it moving. We are the faces of Asian American activism. How can you recreate your story so you don't feel like it's working against you? What is the new paradigm of regular folks getting involved and making something happen? We have to take a stand. We have to fight for our space here, um, and for our education, and for our beliefs, and our thoughts, and our ideology. Basic level of band. And literacy is my crew. We make uh, we make music and perform and shit. We've been uh, we've been touring for the last six seven years. Uh, we started off as a spoken word collective. As we grew, uh, we expanded into music. We are also artist educators. There was always a desire to make people critically analyze their environment, promote critical thinking. About two years ago, we recognized this uh, a similar trend on college campuses. A disengagement between what it means to be a political activist and an organizer with what it means to pursue an education and what it means to to basically succeed as a person. Campus Build uh, is a program dedicated to the idea of, of reimagining political activism on college campuses. Campus Build allows artists to be able to, to use their frame of reference when they create things towards actually creating solutions for issues that we as a people often face. And so what we're doing for the next couple of days on this campus is facilitating a few workshops based on the idea of reframing activism and sort of taking a closer look at art and, and politics. By unleashing our imagination, we open up brand new possibilities for problem solving and also for building community. basically a time every Sunday uh, that happens for the community where we can come out and discuss issues that uh, might be pertinent to us or just to be a time to intellectually you know grow as college students. So one of the things that was brought up at Cornell's Unity Hour was the nigger man, a manual made by white people for white people on how to treat a nigger. You guys don't know who does it exactly? It's anonymous. 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 It's you know, you alienating certain people, that doesn't that doesn't make you progressive in whatever it is that you're searching for. All of us of color were here talking about it, but people who actually were the people who like were saying those things aren't the people who are in this discussion. That kind of goes along with what I'm thinking of like how are we going to actually make them see who we are, like see that we're intelligent people and see that the kids on this campus are not the description of this Negro manual that they have online. Like the people that they're describing in that, that's not who we are and that's not who we embody. By talking about it, you've been power to that hatred. You know what I mean? And I think that like what that hatred tries to do is it break us down and get us away from who we really are. And I think like the appropriate response wouldn't be to respond to what you see on there as hurtful as maybe, but to be unapologetic to who we want. Like the question about political literacy, like what we can do, like how can we better, I mean, communicate as a whole. There are always a number of ways to respond to any any given incident. Um, I agree about the comments made for conversations and what constructive dialogue actually looks like. I think it's one thing to create a safe space for students of color to actually deal with some of the, the deep emotion that's never allowed to be part of the discourse. And then, as far as some of the responses go, like the public responses go, what does building an infrastructure mean 
so that there is already a system in place for us to respond quickly and effectively to incidents like this in a public way so that a presence is felt on campus. Yeah, basically reintroducing innovation and creativity into the political process. Instead of looking at how to solve one issue, we decided to see how we could help students understand the foundation of why they are on campus, why they do what they do, and from there being able to imagine possibilities for new ways of solving problems. Drizzle, Cornell, Ithaca, uh, on our way to a rally in support of Wisconsin unions. Expect it to be filled with energy and revolution. Round and round, round and round, round and round. You can't go to rallies in real pants. That doesn't make any sense, even if it's 30 degrees outside. I want to rally against this snow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be familiar with what what's going with um, Walker's campaign, but his campaign was funded largely by the Koch brothers. I feel like there's pockets of activists, a small group of people that do it, yeah. and other people are just kind of watching it. Dirty worlds, yeah. There's activists like dirty worlds. Oh man, I feel like a lot of us feel like we missed it. You know, we missed that time where people were angry and people were ready to move. Activism itself, the idea of activism, has been somewhat flattened. When we ask students whether or not they feel like they're activists, or whether or not they would describe themselves as politically engaged, most of them would be like, mm, maybe, but probably not. You've got people in this community who criticize people who do stand up, like, oh, they're just, you know, doing that black protest thing. The reason we don't like saying that we're activists is not because we think it's a dirty word, but because we've never actually successfully had a sit-in. We've never actually hosted like a, like a protest or a rally. And I feel like if I say that I'm an activist, people be like, you're such a poser, what are you talking about? You know, you did nothing. And even before you get to do anything, they correct you right. and make sure that you're not fitting in with that. Um, and there's a lot of hate in that way for people that are activists then. Right. There's internal silencing. You would think it's more like administration, but really it's like students just like you right. telling you that you shouldn't be doing this or that. Out of fear. <laughs> would you say that you are a part of your organization for extracurricular reasons? As a resume builder? For community? Would you say it's a passion? Well, you know, when I first came here, I sat down with every single organization and I asked them why they existed. <laughs> And the one that hurt me the most was watching the activist group. They couldn't tell me anything. They were like completely blank. But the, for me, I feel like they're also the ones with the most passion. You know, when you're not in that bubble, um, to be considered an activist comes with a whole bunch of other things. You know, activists are going to yell at me if I drive a nice car. Activists are going to yell at me if I wear Nikes. And so when, when I start thinking about what it, what it means to have an enjoyable college experience, part of that as human beings is we need to be having fun. And oftentimes people feel like activism, college activism, is one of those things that kills having fun. We're in this industry of creating knowledge, right? But before I feel like people were creating knowledge because they were bored right? and they wanted more stuff to think about, right? The time of like Socrates and Aristotle, the schools of philosophy, the schools of thought, right? It was a way to guide your life in a way that you can play more. But now like higher ed's more around the industry of creating knowledge to pretty much screw people over, I feel like. It, claims to be the place that solves social ills, right? A place where people can come together and think about these issues and find solutions to them. But it itself is an issue. 
I sit there, hoping, holding on to his, not yet, maybe, and soon, like, there were something, like, this mirror is worth something, because when I look at me, looking at me, I keep seeing why I wouldn't call me back me. Artists, whether they're painters or musicians, they, they look at a situation and try and figure out how they can most effectively and innovatively convey their message. In the same way as activists, we should also look at each problem and see how we can be creative and, and how we can attract people to engage in an issue. This is a little bit of a diagram of what I feel goes on in the head of a person who might not necessarily consider themselves an activist, right? When it's like, you know, like it, when it comes down to, to basic human desire, oftentimes folks would rather go to a club than get their ass whipped by a cop. Right. Regardless of how they feel about the cops. I need to let go of that imagery I have in my head that activist equals protest equals rallies equals sit-ins equals World Street Hall takeover. People do you think they have to do the protests, the rallies, the sit-ins, the teach-ins. But I think activism in the sense is to keep the idea of identity always present. No matter who or where you are, no matter what you're going to be doing at that moment. Like the idea that you're always representing who you are and you're proud of it. I think that's activism. Anytime we look at activism or organizing or strategies on college campuses, we see the same grab bag of tactics again and again. We see strikes, marches, protests based on an idea of what political activism looks like from a story that's incomplete and that ignores the genuine creativity of a bus boycott in 1955. There are new forms of student activism and student involvement, not necessarily 1960s antiquated forms. But I think on this campus especially, it's hard to be creative because people fear so much judgment on this campus, right? Like they don't want to be the risk taker in fear of what their peers are going to judge them about. I mean, it sounds pretty basic, you know, but where, where are we going as, as student organizations? Right? What are we, what the fuck are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Um, like how do you know that your product that you put out, if your performance is gonna be perceived in the way that you want your audience to perceive it? <laughs> <laughs> I usually trust that it won't. I am the elephant in surprise, the black white elephant in the room, the beauty and the pain of Ella Fitzgerald's tune. I naturally challenge the challenge your television assumes. It suits me fine, but what you telling it to? I'm a telling the tether, the tether will ever percent so few. I said I'm the telling the tether, the tether will ever percent so few, so few, so few. Storytelling is an amazing way to get a political message across because as opposed to telling people facts and statistics and reasons why they should be involved, you pull them into a, a personal reason. We are taught to separate art and politics. I think it's certainly my generation that was still the case. These students don't feel that way. They want that. They want to be using art to say something, to make something happen, to be involved in that political conversation. The goal always in, in my writing and performance is to communicate my ideas as effectively as possible and as innovative as possible. Every student that shows up to my classes loves hip hop. Right. I always say, you know, can you love hip hop but not love black people? Can you love hip hop and not love freedom? Right? Not not love political movement. By bringing our performance into the classroom, we also saw how those two things are linked, that to teach is a, a sort of performance. There's a very limited amount of themes that, we are, that we're really talking about when we tell basically any story. Drawing upon what's common and what's most human to us, right? How difficult it is to be authentic to yourself because of the pressures from other people. Mm -hmm and how that affects how you even perceive yourself. How do you, how, how could they connect to it if they never experienced racism, if they never known to be racist themselves? You have to act it honestly enough so that they can say, you know, they can understand this is what it would actually be like. Using humor and making people laugh instead of like feeling like they're just like in this thing to be like preached, like like they're being preached to mm -hmm. is like really important. Mm -hmm. Because like for us, we never want to preach to our audience. It's like our goal is like, always just to start a conversation. So if I was if I was the director, I would ask you to um, approach that ridiculousness, right? Instead of approaching it as this is gonna be funny, this is how I'm gonna get my message across. No, I'm I'm gonna get my 
the message across by being ridiculous, by being absurd, by being over the top. I am going to approach this work by showing just the business. And guys, they grip texts and grip knives and grip guns, cause click clack. Our hip hop state of mind has evolved into many illusions of being a quick escape from inner city life confusion. Kings were killing kings, bullets banged on beats, and all that history had dwindled down to a statistic. But let me tell you, in all actuality, my words aren't flat. They are three-dimensional. They come out you like an explosion of colors, sights, sounds, and mind-boggling things. Let's start by taking out the Taken, the Get Around Community Man, and Minus the A-Holes, and the Douchebag Ladies. <laughs> Campus Build gives artists an entry point to engage in issues that oftentimes they're not invited into. By being able to own your narrative, you learn how to show people why an issue that you care about is also something that affects them as well. It's not like it's not there, right? The creativity is there, and that's why I think I appreciate you guys coming here and challenging, challenging them on that. The crazy thing about being able to do Campus Build is that I always learn something new that I didn't expect I was going to learn. I think you really needed something like Campus Build. And I mean, the way we just saw this was beautiful because we saw people, you know, on campus all laughing and coming together and being inspired to go out and start building. What is important to us is not just activists or single hacks of activism, but more so a culture of activism to inspire a generation of people who do critically think, people who do not accept what's just given to them and people who want to fight for something bigger. If you guys can do that, that's powerful. So here we are, building with you, having a good time with you. We got an awesome week at Cornell. Cornell University, please give yourself a round of applause for hosting us here. Let's go. Illiteracy.